I think the biggest contribution of ODI to international development, at least from the perspective of those of us who care about forests, is to bring a consistent voice for prioritizing the needs of the poor and forest dependent communities in forest policy and practice. Over the last 10 years, C4, Center for International Forestry Research, has collaborated with ODI on a number of projects spanning topics from rural livelihoods to decentralization to the verification of the legality of timber to most recently reducing climate emissions from deforestation and degradation. And ODI has brought to those collaborations a consistently rigorous approach to the analysis of various policy options, but also a consistent point of view that the needs of the poor need to be prioritized in forest policy interventions. Two years ago, we collaborated with ODI on a book uh, to influence the global climate negotiations, and particularly how to include forests in those negotiations in ways that would be effective, efficient, and equitable in reducing emissions. And it's fair to say that ODI staff contribution to that book were very important in keeping the focus of all of us on those poverty and equity dimensions. Subsequently, ODI staff went on to contribute to an options assessment report on reducing emissions from deforestation and degradation that was commissioned by the Norwegian government. And that report was quite influential in negotiating and donor community circles. And it's just one example of the role that ODI has played over the years in, in making a difference in development policy and practice. As I look ahead to the key development challenges that we're going to be facing in the next few years, particularly in the forestry sector, I think what we need the most is a clearer focus on the political economy of forests. I think, as in other sectors, the forestry sector has gone through phases of focusing on technical fixes. You know, how do we do improved stoves or improved logging practices? And then we've moved on to a focus on getting the prices right, you know, trying to get the economics of the sectors right. But finally now we've moved to a time when we're focusing on getting the institutions and governance right and being willing to have a better understanding of what are the politics of these issues, who are the winners and losers, and what are the barriers to putting the good policies that we know are needed into place. So when I look at the role of ODI and it's what it's played over the last 50 years in influencing development policy, that consistent voice for prioritizing the needs of the poor and making sure that policy solutions are equitable is going to continue to be a very important contribution to that agenda.